what state should you not be investigating as an investor in real estate today that's what we're going to be talking about kirby has properties in four different states i have properties in two and we're going to be talking about our experiences and mostly you know what we've heard from other investors and where they've invested certain states that are more difficult to invest in such as uh, california new york washington i've heard illinois is a tough state to invest in um so we're just going to be going back and forth on what we've heard i've heard you know some of these states it's it's crazy because you would look at the laws and they protect the landlord more or i'm sorry they protect the the tenants more than the landlord there's a video that i had watched and we'll have to do a reaction to it i have to find it but um in washington there's a landlord that from how it was worded it seemed like he was living there but renting out a part of his house or or he had moved out and then rented his house and he couldn't move back in his house and the tenant was delinquent <clears throat> and he wasn't collecting rent from the tenant the tenant wasn't paying rent and the tenant was airbnb the part of the house below so the tenant was making money off of the guy's property not paying his rent and then the tenant got approved from the state to for the proper for like a it was like some licensing that was required or whatever in that state he got approved for like to rent it out basically the tenant did and so the landlord had no help from the state to actually like evict the guy and the eviction process would have taken up to like a year so the the guy um the landlord was out of his house and kind of humiliating because the tenant that he's trying to evict from his own home is making money off of his property so there are certain states like that where they protect the tenant so much and they make it difficult for the actual person that owns the property um to actually have rights you know with from their own property so i mean the states i invest in florida georgia i you know they they very much are um protective of the the landlords i would say but there's other states that we've seen um california or new york that that make it very difficult for investors before i jump in alex you look like you're in alaska are you sure you're still in florida right now <laughs> i'm in florida i'm in florida yeah you look looking pretty bad over there um <laughs> yeah and and knowing having having the uh knowledge and understanding the nuances of how um how the tenant landlord landlord laws work in a particular state. Um, Illinois, more in the urban areas, I mean, in the major city populated areas, it's harder to uh, deal with tenants. Uh, states, counties, I mean, cities, counties run a little different. I mean, states, you don't know, have their laws, but some counties, things run a little different. Uh, I wouldn't invest in the North. I mean, for the most part, for the most part, I think furthest I will go north is maybe Kentucky. That's probably the furthest north I will go. I mean, I used to live higher up in the north in Michigan, and I just seen the nefarious things that my relatives and friends' families did to stay in properties longer than they should. And and how they think that being having a place to live is a moral obligation instead of a financial obligation meaning that if i don't have a place to stay and i can't pay you you're more you morally as a landlord you're morally obligated to have me just sit in this property and me not pay you you know they don't understand the nuances of hey i still got bills to pay also uh, but that's just you know based off of my living knowledge anecdotal knowledge of being up there for 20 years and I just don't want to deal with it. But being in landlord friendly states are is my as an investor is my preferred thinking. That's the thing you need to know is understand where where you're actually at when you start investing. I'm not saying that tenant friendly places can't give you the ROI or cash flow that you want. I think you will have to deal with more headaches if you don't screen and thoroughly screen tenants to 
make it happen. And I mean, even in Florida, Georgia, and the places that I have properties, I done had eviction issues. Uh, I had to evict tenants, but the tenants, uh, once the eviction process went through, it wasn't like the gentleman in Washington where it took a year to evict somebody. I think the longest it took uh, was 30, 45 days. And, and I've done evictions in every state. So yeah, 30, 45 days. Um, and the tenants know that they have no, they have no claim or qualms to it. You know, claims to anything is, they don't believe it's a moral obligation. They know they can't pay. And of course, I mean, I, I try to understand from their side of it, but I don't have no place to stay. I'm not just going to sit out on the streets until I find the capital. So you're going to try to stay in the property long as possible. But, you know, in the landlord friendly states, it's not, they don't have that chance to be sitting there for years. And of course, I've seen things in California, New York, Detroit, where landlords and tenants be fighting for years on end, you know, especially California, you know, COVID, nobody ain't, you know, been paying attention to COVID on a large scale for the past, let's say, two years. And the moratorium for COVID, where tenants didn't have to pay, just ended at the beginning of this year. So how are they, so the landlords was having to come up with that payment every month for years because tenants weren't paying. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle that people get in, but I believe that understanding the nuances of it, understanding what kind of state you're you're in if you're investing, that will help you a long way moving forward when it comes to your strategy on trying to invest. And it's interesting because it, there's some states that they only allow you to uh, raise rent, I think it's 5% plus inflation. And really that doesn't do much because if property taxes go up, like, astronomically in insurance and it sur surpasses that 5% plus inflation, then you're kind of stuck with the, uh, with that overhanging bill. Is Am I correct? Well, yeah, but first, but first, before that, usually we don't have hyperinflationary environments. I mean, so you can't, I mean, I know we want to talk about this time in, you know, this small time where we having this hyperinflation, um, and then, oh, you should be able to raise it whatever you want. I get it, but this is not the norm. This is an exception. But I'm just basing it off of normal economic cycles. Uh, and what you're saying is talking about rent control, rent control uh, units. And then there's a lot of rent control in the Northeast and the West. <clears throat> but yeah, they do have states like that. But I, I didn't want to go to the because of the inflationary environment. Usually inflation, if you go back on a scale, you know, the past, you know, 100 years, that quote unquote, I'm using quotes, because I mean, I know groceries, gas, all that stuff, the inflation is higher, but I'm just going off the government data. Inflation in the United States averages about two to 3%. That, that's that's what it is over a long term period. I mean, of course, it's just like the stock market when you say the S&P 500 averages 10 percent a year over the long term. People are gonna tell you about the times it went up 36 percent or the times it crashed 50 percent. But yeah, those microcosm times and small framework of time. But average it, for the S&P 500 is about 10 to 11 percent per year, and that's the same thing with this. I mean, we had the 80s, we had the 80s where we had I mean, well, 70s hyperinflation. Then interest rates came down some, but the interest rates were still high. And then from the 90s all the way to 2020, interest rates have been going down. Inflation was almost near zero, very stagnant, according to the government data. So if you can raise it 5%, you're technically above inflation. Do I believe government should tell me as an investor how much I can raise my rent? No. But I understand if you don't want, if if you're more cognizant of, you know, we want to ensure that the people with lower income has the ability to stay in the property for a long period of time. I understand why they do it. 
but I don't agree that investors should want to invest there if governments control what they do and how they make money. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. With all that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please let us know down below. Uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.